and we ask questions. And uh, sometimes over 100 questions are asked. And I think we have 98 this year. So Cohen did get 98 questions, and he did answer them all. But when we come forward, as you were too, uh, they, we won't be asking all those 98 questions. So we won't. But the problem, the, the, the trouble, the difference for me is that you get to see them and hear all 98. Your family won't get to see them or hear them unless you ask Cohen for it, which is fine. In fact, ask him for the sheet and have him answer for you. See how he does. That's got to be good. But uh, anyways, but today when he comes forward during the rite of confirmation, we are going to ask him a few questions about doctrine, faith, and life in the church uh, and in Christ. So, so just be aware of that, okay? Um, I think that's it. Uh, we're going to follow the service as printed. Uh, go right through this as we go through it. Um, Pastor is our digital organist today. He'll start us off with the hymn and explain how that goes when we get to that point. And we do have one hymn that we're going to try to sing. I know it's not going to be loud or anything, but that's fine. I think it's a great hymn that lends itself to what we're doing today. So hopefully we can uh, sing through that hymn together. And, and if you don't sing, don't worry. Pastor and I are pretty loud anyway, so we're good. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it is live now. Uh, it is posted on our Facebook page, so if there is anybody that you want to make sure can view it, not able to be here today, and we'll also have it for, I think, give you an actual file afterwards. You want to keep well. that and show people later. It'd be like my wedding service, my wedding, you'll just stay in there and get really dusty, and then one day you'll get out and say, oh, look. Cohen will be 39 years old. And he'll say, Finally, take a look at it. And your children will be like, Look at you, Dad. <laughs> your braces. <laughs> but your head was cool. <laughs> you wore a pink tie. And you wore a pink tie that day, Dad. Yeah, the the floor shirt was just awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. I think that is all we have for notes. Again, we'll just follow the service as. Okay, then I invite you to please stand as we begin our worship service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth? I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sins. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a most sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Lord, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak responsibly the words of the introit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he has shown his mercy to us. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, my whole being rejoices, my flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to shale, or let your holy one see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory because he has shown his mercy to us. The Lord be with you and also with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity by the confession of the true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's word. The Old Testament reading for Trinity Sunday begins at Genesis chapter 1, beginning at verse 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the flesh of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over everything that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. And so God blessed the seventh day and made it only because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Acts, the second chapter. Peter. Standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourself know. This Jesus delivered up to the, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosening the pains of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell secure in her dwelling hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your holy one see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life, and you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about our patriarch David, that he both died and was buried. And his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out on this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. But all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I reverence for Christ and read the Holy Gospel. I invite you to please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them, and when he saw them, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching 
teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the hymn of the day. I'm going to play that here through, through the computer visually. It's going to play through the hymn stanza once, and then we'll start singing and talking that. For the Father is one person, 
The Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the God of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one. The glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. So the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. And in this trinity, none is before another or after another. None is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal. So that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Wow. What an amazing thing. The Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are trying God, and like Cohen said, three in one. I want to stop there, though, just for a second and tell you, quite frankly, the words Trinity and Triune not found in the Bible. You won't find the word Trinity or Trinity in the Bible. Those are Latin words that Christians use to describe our God outside of scriptures. But the scriptures themselves, by the way, though those words are not found in there, everywhere is evidence in the Holy Scriptures for the Trinity. Our readings today, in fact, present the triune God in very clear language. They show that our triune God also is not some God who sits in heaven just simply staring at us, but a God who's living and present and active among us. The Old Testament lesson all the way back in the very beginning of the world, God spoke in the original language, and he refers to himself in the plural. Let us make man in our image. In the epistle today, Peter, speaking on the day of Pentecost, preaching, clearly describes a triune God. He says, this Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted the right hand of God, and having received from the blood the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. In the gospel, he Jesus himself clearly identifies the Trinity. He commissions his disciples and believers of all times in the church to go and make disciples baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything and command you. Here at Redeemer, 2,000 years after this has been spoken, we're still living out this great commission and Cohen is a great example of that. Cohen Lee and his fellow converts were baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Many were Catholic converts were actually baptized right here in this book. Did I baptize you? I can't remember who did the baptism. Is that me? Or was that the tallest? Left me did? I was here. I was here. But I can't remember who actually did the baptism. Left me. Usually moms remember that. But thanks for your love. I how much you love me, baby. You were ready to put me right there. <laughs> thanks, Pastor. Um, yeah. Wow. Baptizing in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right from this spot, Cohen. And you've been taught the things of Jesus. The doctrines and all that Jesus commands, like he said 2,000 years ago. And then now, today, you're here to profess and vow to believe and follow all those things in the face of death and till death. This is right here where our relationship with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit was made sure by God himself. As he reached down through water and the word and he made us a part of all that Christ did. His life, his death, his resurrection. Here in baptism, we died with Christ and we're risen to new life in Him. Through our baptism, we continue to daily receive forgiveness of sins 
And when is that going? Are going to send new life and salvation. Thank you. And our baptism of Christ's victory over sin, death, and the devil is our victory. Colin, it was right here at your baptism that a profession of faith was made on your behalf. Your parents and your sponsors were standing right up there in the semicircle. And then Pastor left, they asked that everybody respond in your behalf. I want to read to you what Pastor Leslie Brett said. And here's the cool thing. If you please look in your bulletins, you will see. I want you to look at the questions I'm about to ask. We are about to ask um, Cohen. Right after the confirmation address, there's a few questions there. I want you to see those questions. Because I'm going to turn to the baptism. When we baptize Cohen, we ask some questions out loud. But since Cohen couldn't answer for himself that day, we asked the church and you guys to all answer in his stead. And here's what you said. Or this is what I asked. Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his, do you, sorry, do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Do you believe in God the Son? Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? And you know what? Everybody got an answer for you that day, Cohen. But guess what? Today, I'm going to ask you those very same questions as you can see in the right of confirmation. And now, guess what? You get to answer on behalf of yourself. You get to stand up now. And those questions we asked all those years ago, we're going to ask you again and see if you still believe it. That's pretty awesome. We're going to ask you on your own only have to confirm and confess the very faith that was given at your baptism. Today you will confirm before your family, friends, and the church that you still have the faith given in your baptism. And you will also make very serious vows that not only do you believe everything you were taught, but that you will keep believing it and confessing this till you die. And that even in the threat of death, you will not renounce or stop believing and confessing faith in the triune God, particularly faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you will vow today, Cohen, to keep that faith that you are confessing today by staying connected to God's word and sacraments so that the Spirit can work in your heart Sustaining and keeping that faith burden forever. I want you to go on. You look where you were looking, but turn the page to the vows. Just following the questions from the small catechism that we'll be asking him to. But then just after that, I'm, we are going to ask you a few more questions. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? And Cohen. You're going to answer that question. And then I'm going to ask, do you intend to live according to the word of God? And in faith, word and deed, you remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death. And then I'm going to ask, meaning until you die, whether it's 90 or 80 years old. But then the next question is, do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession of the church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall? I'm not going to mince any words. You're about to promise before your family and before this altar that you're not going to stop worshiping. That you're going to keep worshiping God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit until you die or put to death for it. Every time you come into this place at the beginning of the worship service, you're going to hear that name again. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's called the invocation. It's where we invoke the name of the Trinity to signify that our worship is exclusively Christian. And to remember that we are God's baptized people. And then we will hear the name of the triune God spoken over us, come in the absolution as forgiveness of sins is pronounced and declared. And at the very end of the service, the very end of the service, we can speak.
the name of the Trinity. The Trinitarian name of God is spoken and put upon us. He puts his name on us. And so we begin the service with the Lord's name and we are sent out in his name. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I hope, Cohen, every time you hear that, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the name of God, the name of the triune God, I hope it reminds you of the God who created and sustains faith in you. And that through his word, he shows you your sin and shows you your Savior. It's kind of cool. The Father sends the Son to save his creation, to save the world. The Son comes into this world, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, and then later was baptized for us. Oh, and that's baptism, boy. You want to talk about a clear picture of the Trinity. At his baptism, as John is pours water over his head, or however he does it, the heavens open up and a voice says, This is my son. And then the Spirit comes down to the, as a dove. And Jesus continues from there on to keep living a perfect, obedient life for us. And then what's crazy, even after he lived a perfect life with no sin, he then takes all of our sin on himself. And he goes to a cross and he suffers and dies the punishment that we deserve for that sin. And three days later, he rises from the dead. And the Son, the Son promises the Holy Spirit and guess what? The Holy Spirit comes. And the Holy Spirit comes to the disciples on the day of Pentecost and allows them to preach these, the, all the, the gospel in all these different languages so that the whole world can hear. And then the Holy Spirit keeps working the disciples on to write down all that, write down God's word so that we can preach it today and study it and listen and learn it and, 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 and do devotions from it. And that word makes us disciples. So that the Holy Spirit works through the Word, gives us faith in Christ. And Christ then, our Savior, points us back to the Father. Cohen, at your baptism, Pastor Lovely, right after he poured water on your head, he read a blessing. And I'm going to read that blessing to you. So he took you in his arms as soon as you were done, he was done baptizing, and said, The Almighty God and the Father, my Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you with his grace to life everlasting. In just a few minutes, Colin, you're going to kneel at that new Pastor, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read that very same blessing over your head. Blessings to you, Colin. As you confess and confirm the faith in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I pray, Colin, unlike half of our confirmation class, pray that you keep the same faith. That you remain in true faith for the rest of your life. Until that day, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit call you to come into their visible presence in heaven. Amen. And the peace that passes understanding to your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. At this time, we are going to continue with the confirmation address that is found there in your worship folder. When children have come to know the truths of the Christian faith as they are contained in the Luther's, in Luther's Catechism, so that as directed by St. Paul, they might examine themselves, they should be admitted to the Lord's Supper. However, before they receive the Holy Sacrament, they should give evidence of their knowledge and profess their faith in the presence of the assembled congregation. Holy baptism is the washing of rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit 
whom God shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we might in hope become heirs to eternal life. Through this sacrament, God receives little children into His covenant and kingdom of grace, working faith in them and making them members of Christ's church and temple of the Holy Spirit. And as God will not let His faithfulness fail, but will keep His covenant and mercy, even so He says to each of His own, Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. To the end, that this purpose of God may be accomplished, and children may grow in grace and Christian knowledge as they advance in the years, the Lord commands parents, Bring up your children in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And He bids the church feed my lambs. In accordance then with Christ's command, children should be instructed in the Christian faith and should daily give themselves to prayer and devotion to God. To encourage Christian knowledge, faith, and action, the rite of confirmation is maintained in the Lutheran Church. The catechumens publicly make profession of the true faith, recalling the covenant God made with them in holy baptism. The Church, the dispenser of God's mysteries, having assured itself that the catechumens possess such knowledge of Christian doctrine as, in, as well as will enable them to examine themselves and thus partake worthily of the body of blood of Christ, invites them to receive the Holy Supper. With the laying out of hands, the Church prays over them for the Holy Spirit of God, that they may grow in grace, stand firm in their profession, and become, uh, become fruitful in every good work, and in the end, receive the crown. Cohen Lee Gross is now presenting himself this day for confirmation. We shall therefore give Cohen the opportunity to make the same profession of faith as was made at his baptism, as I said, and to give evidence of his true understanding of the Christian doctrine. And so, Cohen, if you would follow Pastor and I, and if you would go stand right there at the mic facing the altar. Yes, you can take your questions with you, unless your dad wants you to leave them there and try it without I think that was kind of pretty cool. <laughs> oh! Drop a mic! Hey, come here for a second. Come here. Come here. Now I'm going to feel great. It's going to be pretty interesting. I'll be honest. Awesome. All right, all right. This is good. Here's you that have never done that in a million years. Right. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Kuan you have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what we now ask you in the name of the Lord. Commonly gross. Do you this day in the presence of God in this congregation acknowledge the gifts God gave you in your baptism? If so, then say, yes, I do. You do, you do. do you renounce the devil? If so, say, yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all of his works? Do you renounce all of his ways? The next three questions. Though you answered for Colin on his behalf when he was baptized, we're going to say together with Colin as we confess the faith. So, Colin and beloved, do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born to the Virgin Mary, Suffered of Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? 
Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Cool. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? All right, well, now we're going to ask you questions from the packet, small catechism. All right, brother? First question that I want to ask is who, who is the key to the correct understanding of the Bible? Yes, right? All the Old Testament points to the need for a Savior, and the New Testament points that Jesus is the Savior. If you don't have Jesus, you really won't understand what God's Word has to say. Pastor, do you want me to? Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, yeah, I guess. Go ahead. What one word summarizes the entire Ten Commandments? Love. Very good. Is that the question mark or exclamation mark? Oh, let's say it that way. What one word is in our entire thing? Love. Very good. Yes. And, and now, uh, God, how does he expect us to keep the Ten Commandments? Perfect. Perfect. Yes. And that was perfect. Yes. And I'll tell you what. All right. Yes. So we're on the Apostles' Creed here. Okay. What do we believe that God created the universe on? Nothing. Nothing. And how many days did it take him to come? Six. That's right. On the seventh, we heard rested, right? That's your point. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. Yeah, Jesus. Um, God, Christ, we believe, had two natures. What were those two natures of Jesus? Divine and human. Yes! Yeah. Very yeah. soon was both. God, to God and true man. Yeah, yes. That's right. Yeah. That wasn't a question from the seat. Yeah. He knew that too. He's got these down. Man, I don't want to stop here. I mean, we're just going to agree. Okay, but you know what? Just for the fun, we didn't ask this yet today. Ooh, what's original sin? Huh? Sin that down to Adam Yes! Oh. Yes, sin that's been in there. So that would mean so then we're just going to go right out from there. So with that sense, we have original sin. Uh, we are by nature what? Three things. Blind, dead, and yeah. Yes! Yeah. 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 Without the sheep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're on the Lord's Prayer, fellas. Okay? This is, this is right at the top of the hill. All right? Who are the unholy freak that oppose God's will for us in our lives? Our flesh. Yes, our yes. sinful flesh. The world. The world. And who constantly is in death? The devil! Yes, very good. Very good. All right. And in the Lord's Prayer, we say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. How many times does Jesus say we should forgive someone who has sinned against us? 70 or 70. Yeah. 70. And what does that really mean? All the time. All the time. Always. Yeah, exactly. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right. Pastor? Sure. Okay. Uh, tell me, in this church body, we believe that God works through certain means. That not only his word, but with his word, he's given us things to do. Uh, and uh, some what we call sacraments, okay? And in our church, we have how many sacraments? Two. Two, right? And what are they? Sacrament and altar. Yeah, which is Holy Communion and Baptism. Baptism. Amen. Why do we call those things that? Why, why do we even say that God works through them? What, what, what are the three things that we believe make a sacrament? Sacrament is who was it started? Instituted by Christ. Right. Yep. Instituted by Christ. Got an instituted by Christ, which Holy Baptism and Holy Supper Word. And then what else did he do? This is a hard one, I know. But I've been asking, so I can't stop. Yeah. Yeah. 
What the main ties two things here? Invisible element when it is word. Yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, invisible element is word. And the last thing he promised is what? What are we gonna do? Yes! <laughs> oh my god. Hey, slam dunk. Someone tell me to sit back. Okay. Good <laughs> God. Who does all the work in baptism? God. Amen. And going, the actually kind of answer is, what's the old act? Yeah. We're going to sit this thing, right? Right. 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 Anyway, that's all. All right. Fantastic. Okay. So, confession and office of the keys. So, do it. And check for the last two. Right? Come when the pastor speaks the words of absolution, who's doing the forgiving? Am I doing the forgiving or is God doing the forgiving? God is doing the forgiving. Fantastic. Okay. So on the sacrament of the altar, okay. I got two questions. Well, three. I'm just one. Okay. What one word in the words of the institution Jesus speaks? That Jesus' true body and true blood present in the sacrament. What one word can we go to in those words of institution? This is a yeah, right? He says it is, and so it we is. just must take it by faith. Okay. Very good. Now, these two are kind of tricky. And maybe. Maybe Chance and you might remember these two tricky ones. I bet you guys, because we were over and over in this class. Does everyone who comes up to the Lord's altar, no matter what, no matter what, whether you believe it or not, receive Christ's true body and true blood in the sacrament? Yes. Yes, yes. right. My faith does not make the sacrament a sacrament. So I can't go into another church body and say, hey, I think that that's. Or I believe that that's Christ's true body and true blood, but no. It's God's word attached to the visible element where he says this is, then it becomes that very thing. And what we're really saying there is that when who comes for the they're going to get the body of the body. Yes. Okay. And lastly, does everyone who comes up to the Lord's altar, whether they believe it or not, do they receive the benefits of the sacrament? That is forgiveness, life, and salvation. So, no, right? The faith receives the blessings. If you do not have faith, then you're actually taking it to your spiritual home. Right? Very good. Come on. Those are all the questions that you don't have an answer for right in front of you. And now we're going to turn back. That mic wasn't so expensive. I thought you just dropped it right from the other <laughs> direction. That, that was great. But you still have some more questions to answer. Yes, okay? So, Cohen, do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed remain true to God while I serve the Holy Spirit even to death? I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession of church and to suffer all even death rather than fall away from it? We, re we rejoice with thankful hearts that you, Cohen Lee Gross, have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins as you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament. He who has begun a good work and you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. As Cohen goes to the uh, altar there with Pastor, I want to ask if it is. Parents come on forward. You can stand up here at the top of the steps. We have you covered. Uh, we have sponsors here. And, okay, so I want you guys to come forward. Stand up here at the top of the steps. Colin Lee Gross. The Almighty God and Father of Lord Jesus Christ. Oh. I'm going to finish it because I have something to say. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of God and Spirit, forgive you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Before Pastor reads the conference confirmation, I do want to address you as parents who are standing here and all the rest of you. 
The church commends you for your faithfulness in the Christian training of this young man. And since his baptism, you have prayed for him, you have brought him to God's house for worship, you have ensured that he was taught the essentials of the Christian faith. The whole church shares with you now the responsibility and concern for the ongoing instruction and spiritual care of, of COVID. I now ask you, will you intercede for him in prayer and as much as you are able? Will you give him your counsel and aid that in communion with the church, he may grow up to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ? If so, the answer we will with the help of God. And that was the all. Come on. You challenge us. For your confirmation memory verse, actually. The verse that is written up here. And every time that you walk in, we'll be reminded of that. And that comes from Psalm chapter 23, verse 1, where it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We go to prayer. We go to prayer. Almighty, oh, most merciful Father, the Lord is holy back to you the night of coming leave. In the suffering and death of your son, Jesus Christ, covering him by his blood, by your Renew in him the gift of your Holy Spirit that he may live and daily contrition and regret for the faith that are clings to his Savior. Deliver the covenant from the power of Satan and preserve him from false and dangerous doctrines that he may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word that may satisfy for sin by Christ alone. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Receive his body of blood. But the Lord suffer, strength to go to me that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in Christ, learning from his suffering to love you and his neighbor, and to bear the cross with patience and joy until the day of, of the resurrection of our bodies, the life of mortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you, Colin. Amen. That's a little thing. You may return to your seats. We continue with the service of the sacrament. Uh, just a, a note as uh, you come up, we're going to have Cohen. And your family, uh, mom and dad, and sister, come up and partake of Holy Communion together as one family unit. And then, you know, the grandmas and grandpas for sure as well. Um, if you could hold out your hand generously so we could place the wafer into your into your hand. And then uh, Pastor will come along and, and you will be able to grab your individual cup from him and then dispose of those cups in, in the two trash receptacles that are located on either side. So with that, I invite you to please stand. The Lord be with you. And also Lord with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and sent your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us, you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship of the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in the kingdom and teach us to pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at his command with his own words, we receive his testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on that when he was betrayed to prayer, when he had given thanks, he broke and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. 
And the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them as well, saying, Take the drink, but all of you, this cup is the new testament, shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it. And remember to me the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.